Howdy, all you tractor-loving brothers and sisters out there. We got everything we need to put this together. About 90% of the parts are done. So let's get started. Dad's getting our drill cleaned up over here. This is our big, big drill for the half inch and bigger holes we have to drill. It's going to be close, and this is a template I made last time for our casters. And I'm not too sure we're going to have enough room to get a nut on in there. We're going to be very, very close. And I hate to put this beam the other direction, but we might need to. We're going to have to think about that one. Grandpa's out here making sure we're doing it right. You betcha, you got to do it right. What we're doing here is just squaring up our plates to drill the holes. I think we've landed on what, six bolts? Six half inch bolts? I think if you're only doing half inch, I think we need six. So we're going to drill, we're going to clamp this to the beam and drill six half inch bolts in here to hold that on. Then our gusset will go here, our gusset on the end, and we can put our legs on plate that's going to weld on to here. All right, then. So if anything, leave it a little bit out past the end of the yeah, beam. Yeah, yeah. Right. A little more. There, that's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. We're going to clamp that down on here so we can drill our holes, and we've squared it to the center of this I-beam because the ends of the I-beam are not exactly cut square. That's going to be work. in the way. Well, we can move it and switch sides on it. We're going to have a seven foot working distance here, which is plenty. We don't want to be picking things on the edge of the crane. That's where you could get a rollover. We have David out here to help us weld again today, this time for real, because last time he got stuck on the torch and we never really got any welding done. Now we can reference off of that. Our, that's our center line. Got it? Yeah. Okay. That's actually pretty good. Let me see it. Right there. Right there. Okay. That's one way to do it. Start in the middle, we'll put our bolts in here and then we can move the clamps out. All right, got those holes drilled. Those are all half inch grade 8 bolts and I think we're going to use this for a template and drill the other side. Finding our beam is about a sixteenth of an inch narrower on this end for some reason so we're going to adjust accordingly. Are we happy with that? I'll put a clamp here and we're going to use our half inch drill to give us a center using this as a template. We got all those drilled, uh, half inch bolts, six of them. I think they're gonna be fine. We're gonna get David set up over here on the welding bench so that he can weld the gussets and start putting all these together. Getting our angles straight so he can weld this. Our pipes are going to end up about right here on this plate, right next to the other plate that's gonna go in here. So we're gonna Go ahead and drill these. Hopefully, this is kind of a test. So hopefully these are gonna work. Well, he's better than both of us, I would say, wouldn't you? Yeah, better than me. Hopefully. Oh yeah. They work? That one does. Let's Can see if the other get four. A wrench on them? No, but the head's close to the wall. That it'll hold it? Yeah. No. Yeah, there was just a little burr. It's going to be tight. Yeah, I knew it would but be. But I think they'll work fine. As long as we can get them through. Yeah. We're going to put the end plate on later because we need to weld our pipes to this plate here. So we're going to get him set up with the next one. That looks really good. How much do you think you're worth for an hour? Oh, for an hour? Um, for that, I would say probably around 30. 30 bucks an hour? Yeah. How about a free lunch? All right, deal. <laughs> I 
I think I just realized something, guys. Mm -hmm. We're going to need a gantry crane to put this gantry crane together. Yeah, but we got oh, one yeah. right there. Looks good. Nice. Nice welds. Yeah. That looks really good. And Dad and I are finishing up drilling holes to put the casters in here. Now, we're not going to put the casters on yet, but we want to drill the holes before we bolt everything together and weld everything together here. We've got all of our holes drilled in here, so we're going to flip this over. David's cleaning up the top so we can weld our pipes to it. We've got all those cleaned up. We're going to clean up the end of these pipes that we're going to need to weld to. Down here at the bottom and up there at the top. Using a level and a lot of patience, we're going to lay this all out and mock everything up so we can tack weld it. Now try it. There, that's about it, isn't it? Maybe a hair more. Yeah. Try that. Yeah, he was. What do you think? Yeah. Right now we're shimming everything and tack welding it into place. From here to here and here to there is equal, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. We're pretty close. Yeah. Tack. Just so we don't lose so it this so that this stays where it's at. That'll right. hold it. Yeah. Now we're checking the square. We've put a piece of pipe up here. We're going to measure down on each side and see if our distances are the same. Make sure that we're square. It's level. 64 and 7 eighths inch. Okay. 64 and 7 eighths right here. We're 135 and 7 eighths inches. 26 and 3 quarters. <laughs> Man, that's... We're... It's we're within like a, a sixteenth of an inch of square. Yeah, we've just tack welded this on here just to hold everything in place. And David's bolstering up our welds down here. And we're gonna check this for the eighty seventh time to make sure nothing moved. The plan tomorrow is to go ahead and put our cross brace across here where that tape measure is setting. And we're going to stand this up, finish our welds, and do the other side, and then put our beam on there and mock it up so that we can make sure everything's going to be square and lined up. And then we will disassemble it one more time, and then weld everything, and then assemble it for the final time. Dad's working on figuring out the saddle which uh, none of us are really good at, but we're gonna learn real quick. Because we need to be at a little bit of an angle, like so. I need more out down here. Looks pretty good. So what's the plan? Well, we're just gonna make it 36 inches on the short side. Okay. And then wherever it fits up in our A, is where it fits that's where we'll put it okay whether it ends up four feet or four foot four or whatever yeah it really doesn't matter it's not critical we're not making it to plans no the plans are all up here anyway and from talking to my grandfather yesterday he swore up and down we didn't need that cross brace in there that those pipes would hold it i think he's probably right but we really like to overbuild things really overbuild things how's it coming it's going good. All I gotta do is just kinda smooth it out a little bit. Smooth it out with the grinder? Yeah. There's a lot of trial and error in this, isn't there? Yes. But we got this one. When we get it done, we'll use it for a pattern for the other one. Yeah. Just like that. I'll just push it up there to where it fits. That's right here. not too bad. No. That's not bad at all. No. You know what? If you want to mark it, I'll get the flap disc out and well, clean let's, those up. Let's see how square it is. Just Fire. move the pipe. Yeah. Yeah. We'll square it up yeah. when we put it in. You could take it all the way to the bottom. Huh? Like this? And then we only need to cut what we need to, and then it's easier to mark. Yeah. Right there? Yeah. I'm going to need to take it back off to cut it. But that blue tape should peel off of that, I think. Well, and you want to know. Index the top, too. We'll want to do that. 
there? Yeah, yeah right there. It's the top. Okay. Now we'll cut it out with scissors. I've indexed it with a pencil mark here so I can unfold this and cut it out. There you go. Exactly 83 inches. <laughs> That's 83, baby. All right. Nice. There's our template for the next ones. And what are we making here, Dad? Gussets for the base. Because we're paranoid? Because of, I'm worried the base will kick out. Which and it probably we're, won't. We're but. paranoid. Those are gonna go right here. We got the A-frame over here. David's getting set up. He's gonna weld the other side of it. We got it flipped over. And while he's doing that, Dad and I are gonna mock up the other side and get it ready for David to weld. Finished up with this other A-frame. He's just wire brushing a few of the welds. Got both of them done. I've got the beam over here. And I've just bolted these on temporarily. These are our gussets for the top. So the plan is to mock this up and get those tack welded on here. Just finished these gussets up for the bottom. We'll weld those on later after we get everything together. Did we run out of steam? Of our monster gantry crane build. Mm -hmm. You know, on paper, it doesn't look this big. <laughs> no. <laughs> we got our angles pretty good, and I think we got everything square and plumb. I do yeah. too. So far. Yeah. The critical one is still to come, mm -hmm. getting those on there. And that, that's why we're at a stopping point yeah. right now. Yeah, when, <laughs> whenever we don't quite know what to do, it's uh, time for a pause. Yeah. So I'm... I'm the welder tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's and, all the welding that's left is yeah, just those plates. You've yeah. done probably you'll be done eighty percent of it'll be you or ninety even. About yeah. seventy five, yeah. yeah. We just gotta put them little guts that's in, but yeah. those are nothing. Yeah, no, those will be easy. You did all the hard stuff, all the pipes. Yeah. There's a lifting point. We're going to lift these legs up, tip them up, and they're both going to tip this direction. Those pipes are going to weld here and here, and we'll get them tacked. And having this on the lift, I know this is not the proper way to use the lift, but this beam is not even a fraction of what a car weighs. So we can adjust these. I can unscrew these in and out. So we can get our height and angle and everything square, and then we could square the legs up, get those tacked, weld everything together. So far, this is arguably the hardest part. The stuff, all of our components are getting super heavy now, so we gotta be a little careful what we're doing here. Once we get this tacked on and together, then we can flip it up and finish our welding.
Dad's gonna get the backhoe out of here. We've got a long piece of angle iron that's close to 10 foot. We're gonna clamp that to each end of these stands. I'm gonna use my little shop crane, flip this one up, and try and get everything squared up, and then I'll tack all this up here with the welder. You're probably thinking, if you have a backhoe, why are you bothering with a gantry crane? And the reason for that is you really don't have the fine controls. When we go to start lining up engines with the rear end and lining up bolts and things, it'd be nicer to have the gantry crane. Not only that, we don't want to fire up the backhoe every time we got to move a 200 pound part. We got track frames, plus we can hang things on there. We can safely work under it where you don't really want to work underneath hydraulics on anything. Yes, I know there are hydraulic cranes, so there's an exception to everything. The, the other reason for this gantry crane is this is gonna give us an excellent place where we can hang parts and paint them. And we can move them in and out, in and outside, whatever we need to do. It, it's really gonna be very versatile here in the shop. And then we got track frames and tracks to put on. It, and it's gonna take up a lot less space than a backhoe in the shop, so. It just, all the way around, a better option and a safer option for lifting and moving parts. Screwing these in and out to level up our beam. And this way right now, I gotta come up on that one back there just a touch. That should be good. So the way we design this is to have, what, four inches between these pipes up at the very top. So, yeah, with our half inch plate and a two by four, gonna that's really close. gonna be close, yeah. I gotta come it's towards me. Not very much. A little more. 178 and three-quarter inch. Okay. 174 and three-quarter inch. Okay. We're four inches uh. narrow on this side, which means this whole thing needs to go that way about two inches. Yeah, we're and kind I of can a see it. parallelogram right now. Yeah, I can too. Uncle Butch is out here today. He came out here to confirm what we already knew, that we don't know what we're doing. Our plan now is to tack this and continue to score this up we're getting pretty close we're long this way which means this would need to go that way a little bit and you know if we do that it might take up that tiny little gap over there we're you, only an inch off you need the whole end to go over that way about a half an inch then 179 and a quarter baby we're but, within an eighth inch yeah yeah i'm gonna tack everything together we put our levels on here a hundred times and we're finally good. Let's weld it up. I've welded part of this gusset on. I gotta finish it up. Kind of giving my welder a break. It's been going pretty continuously. Dad and Butch are putting on the casters. We got our gussets to put on the very end up here at the top still. Just finished welding the gussets up here at the top. Got those on there. Dad's grinding to put the one on the other side. I got a lot of more welding to do, but we're gonna unbolt this leg and roll it over so I can weld the stuff on the other side. Got my welding pretty much done. I got some more to do on these bottom gussets when we get this thing set up. We're done up top. Dad's cutting off these bolts. They're just a hair too long. So he's gonna grind them off so they won't interfere. We were just admiring our engineering at how well balanced this is when you pick it with a crane. What did you call this, Dad? I called this fantastic engineering. But in reality, it's just lucky engineering. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Got all my welding done up here. I got a little bit more to do on the gussets down at the very bottom once we get it stood up. But we're ready to put it together. You find one? Yep, well, let me get a nut on it. I think so. Before we stand this thing up, we're gonna put the trolley on here. The trolley came with two sides here. A big pin, bolt with a castle nut, 
and a whole bunch of shims and the instructions say basically make sure that the shims are equal on both sides. Dad's looking for a few more washers but we're getting creative because this trolley really didn't come with enough That's better. And these go up here? Yeah. There you go. You want one more? I didn't think you can put the whole stack. Here. And then the nut? Yep. There we go. Well, it's not inside of a D4. You don't need to go nuts with it. Plan right here is to get this off of the automotive lift so we can get in here with our backhoe and stand this whole thing up. Well, why does it look bigger than I thought it was going to be? <laughs> What's it feel like? Is it stable? Yeah, it's pretty stable. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty stable. It That's our six inches of clearance. Yeah. Yeah, it is. But That's right, because we had 12 foot 5 from the bottom of the beam. Yes. And the beam is 12 inches, so yeah. there we are. I forgot. I was thinking we were 12 and a half. This thing's so big, it's almost terrifying. <laughs> like putting a star on the Christmas tree. Yeah, that kind of dwarfs the old shop crane, doesn't it? Yeah. I want to introduce Goliath. And ironically, David welded this thing together. Goliath is 
13 foot, six inches tall, just enough to get out of our 14 foot doors. This is about know, five and a half feet wide down here at the bottom. We have 10 feet across the middle. We can back a truck in, a tractor. We made it tall enough so we can pull cabs on tractors, trucks, whatever we need to do. And in the future, I might add another trolley and chain hoist. But what crane build video wouldn't be complete without a test pick? I'm gonna lock my casters for this pick. So this skid steer weighs about, without the bucket or the forks on it, probably around 6,800 pounds, which is over the capacity of our crane. And this is probably not the brightest idea, but this kind of goes along with a family tradition of stuff like this. So we have a single point lifting eye on this. And as you can see, it's been used a lot because we used to put this in basement foundations and to dig out case on spoils or uh, dish out underneath subfloors or backfill footers. So I've got a lot of experience with drop-ins, we called them. And we used to drop this in sometimes with our excavator, sometimes with our loader, and a lot of times with a crane. But we're gonna try and pick this with our shop crane. We'll see. <laughs> Yeah, this is our great grandpa test, and uh, Dad's going to talk about that in another video. Well, it's not picking it evenly. And I don't know why, because that hook was always pretty well balanced when we used to sling it into basements. It was well balanced because we had the bucket on. We had more weight out front. Well, I got the fork carriage instead of the bucket. I figured that might balance a little well better, and we can get out there and kind of, I don't know, Balance it ourselves. Let's see what it does. Now you are. Now we're off. If you stand on that fork, you'll be off. Go ahead. Almost. Go a little more. Yeah. That do it. Let me get up here where I got the handle. Carefully don't tip the thing over. This back up. It's barely touching. I'll get on this one. Ugh. There, now we're off. Now we're balanced. There you go. Seven, right. 7,000 pounds. Okay, can we let it down now? Plus, you got 250 of me and whatever you weigh. Right. Yeah, we're off the ground, that's, that's for sure. We got another 500 <laughs> between the two of us. 7,000 plus. And we're hanging on it. Yeah. Okay, let's let it down. All right. Despite me being a chicken, Goliath passed the test pick. At 7,000 pounds plus, I don't know, what is this, 6,800, the skid steer, and then you and I is another probably 500. Well, the book says those, those uh, <clears throat> with an attachment on are right at 7,000 pounds. So our 6,000 pound capacity hoist is going to be fine. Oh yeah, a deep two is about 7,500. Yeah. That's about what we were just missing, you know. Oh, that was fun. Yeah. I was a little nervous, I'm not going to lie. I wasn't. Well, you know how I am. Right over left and under. Left over right and under. And there's a perfect square knot. There we go. Here, now we can do this. That'll work. 
short. There we go. Right there. Now we won't hit our heads. And this, you can just do this. Yep. Are we done with this? Yes. We're done. Thing made? Just a few. Yeah. Thought I shut that off. Howdy, all you tractor loving brothers and sisters. Howdy, all you tractor loving sisters and brothers out there. We're on day three. Darn it, I did it again. I'm at about four foot six feet, Dad. <laughs> what you doing? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry, you're concentrating. <laughs>